Yeah. Uh, when Alden and I, Alden, Alden and I, we wrote a number of plays together, and one of the ones we wrote was The Dollar Woman, which was about the pauper auctions which occurred in New Brunswick in the late 1800s, 1895. And the idea for the play came when Alden was writing the history of Campobello Island, and he saw in the governor's notes that there was a woman on the island who was so beautiful that she was sold for a dollar. I couldn't figure out what the heck this was about. Then I realized that there were pauper auctions. Pauper auctions. auctions. And the premise of the pauper auctions was a bid down. The village parish would bring the uh, paupers to the auction and say, all right, Robert, how much money will you take from the parish to look after this pauper for a year? And you'd say, oh, I need $10, okay? And somebody else would say, I'll take it for nine. The parish pays. The, the parish would pay out of the If I'm going to take box. the pauper into my house, yes. the pauper, I get money from the parish You get to money do from the parish. To do. And of course, there were those types of people who, if there was an attractive young girl there, would bid her down to a dollar. Oh, I'm sorry. Th this history is all there, and it's all there in the play. Well, uh, we had almost written this play about this woman whose husband owned the pub, and they went belly up, blah, blah. When I went to the museum at St. John, and I found the book of the overseer of the poor for the parish of Cardwell, which includes Sussex in that area, and there it was, three generations in the one family that had all the records of all the payments that had been put out for all the paupers over the years. And I oh, thought, this, this is unbelievable. And there was this family name that I kept uh, repeating. And I knew they, the family lived near Penobscot, just outside of Sussex. So when I got home, I went to the telephone and I phoned this number and I said, the young lady answered, and I said, uh, are you the uh, the um, granddaughter of so and so? She said, "Yes." I said, "Well, I wonder if I could talk to you about this project I'm on about the pop rocks." And she said, well, "Why did you talk to my grandfather?" I said, "What?" She says, "He's here in the kitchen." Ninety something years old. I got in the car, went to Sussex with my tape recorder, sat, and talked to him for about two and a half, three hours. I came running back to Fredericton phoned Alden and say, Alden, throw it out. We've got the story here. Jesus. So we wrote the play. I'm sorry, the title of the play? The Dollar Woman. The Dollar Woman, okay. That's we the wrote the play and we toured it. It became one of the most successful shows we ever did. In Sussex, the gymnasium can take maybe 350 or 400 people. The night we played there, there were 700 people. We're stuck. Mr. McCready, Louis J. McCready, who was the last overseer of the poor parish, who was the man who talked to me, was at the opening night. That day I phoned his granddaughter and said, how is Louis? And she said, he's new from the skin out. She said, he's got new underwear, he's got new shirt, he's got a new suit, he's got it all new. And he was there on the opening night and when we took the curtain call, we introduced him, he stood up. 700 people went crazy because they, there was a, he came onto the stage and my son was playing the 10 year old. And he said to Warwick, he said, did you know that that was me? Wow. Because he went to the last auctions with his father. And wow. And <laughs> I mean that, a historic figure like Maggie Harvey, who was this Mi'kmaq, she took people into her home for years and she educated them. She sent them off to the Boston States and they became doctors and lawyers and nurses. Unsung heroes, totally unknown. So it's a sort of foster parent idea, but in terms of poverty. In terms of poverty, yeah. And it was before the almshouses, because they were scared of the almshouses because they heard stories about almshouses in Nova right. Scotia burning down and the people being barred in and all of that, yeah. So yeah, quite exciting. Wow. But those people, people want to smell their home. They really do, you know. They really do. I mean, Who's like, doing it now? Who's doing uh, it in Saskatchewan? Who's doing it in 
you know, in Manitoba. I mean, mm -hmm. we're touring the theater for young audiences. We're not touring. We're not, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the Paul Thompsons of the world also do that. The Absolutely. plays must come from the communities. Absolutely. They must be not just about what the Absolutely. elites are writing about yep. or what, in fact, the you know, the mechanical storytellers on television yep. are writing about, however wonderful uh, Alan is. Yep. I mean, these are not stories that are coming from communities, about communities, for communities. They're not. And they no. kind of, it's a kind of a... Um, yeah. Uh, I must say, um, I was very pleased to see Caleb Marshall, who's running Theatre New Brunswick at the moment, uh, David Adams Richards, is his uncle. Right. And uh, last year, the year before, he adapted David Hockey Dreams. Okay. And it was quite wonderful. It was quite wonderful. There were a lot of young people in it, and Alice and that. But it really, it did speak to the community. 